What's up, you beautiful people? I have to start off with uh, uh, thanking you because I have gotten such great uh, comments and... You know, I said that I was feeling a little down last week and that I just had been burning the candle at both ends and and I was really, really feeling it. And uh, the overwhelming support, I honestly was very, very touched. And uh, I know that I'm not the only one who feels this way occasionally, especially when when you're juggling so many things, um, you can really just start to feel like I'm not sure I have much gas in the tank left. And so usually that just takes a few days of like, right? They didn't come back up for air. You, 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 you feel fine. And so this week, this is the only video that I'm going to shoot. Um, I have other ones that I have to make for the main channel, but for my own sanity, uh, I'm not going to be making those right now. I'm just I'm just too taxed, and I just feel like, like I need this weekend to hang out with family, play with the dog, uh, play some Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Have anybody playing that? I mean, like, I never get a chance to play video games, but then we got the kids a uh, switch a nintendo switch for christmas a couple years back and i got the zelda because i was like fuck I, I loved zelda i loved um our Karina of time was the last one that i played in like on n64 back in my 20s and that was it and then i kind of just stopped for like 20 years or something or 15 years and i never paid attention and then i started uh then they got this and i got a uh, uh, breath of the wild which i, just thought, I was like this is a this is a wonderful game you could pick it up anytime and you could do like any little bit and i, I was just i was i, I was all in <laughs> so um anyway i've been playing that a little bit uh and and just kind of trying to not think about youtube and sometimes i think when you're really just when you're when you're when your foot is to the floor and that race car is in the red you're you're just you're like something's gonna give out and i don't want to get sick and i don't want to get burned out and i don't want to just one day be like Screw it, selling all my stuff, and that's it, right? So, um, need this week. But I'm still here with you because I think that this is actually therapeutic, talking to you, and uh, this, like, unscripted, un there's no stress. The, the thumbnails are all the same, right? The titles are more or less the same. I just kind of tell you, like, what's in that video in case you don't want to watch. Um, and that they're unscripted. All I do is like literally have my notes here with the new stuff that came out and that's it. So uh, this is easy to do and I really enjoy talking to you and I love the feedback that I get and I, I feel like being a part of your week uh, sometimes can mean as much to you as it does to me. So I'm really, I'm, I'm just, I'm very thankful. The, the first thing I wanted to mention, actually the first thing I want to mention is that this is, like somebody asked me if I had joined the clergy and I it did not, I am not a monk. I know this kind of looks like it. This is actually from American Giant, and I have two of these. I wore one, I think, last week. Uh, they have this new, like, I think it's called their American Classics or Heritage or something series. More or less what they're trying to do is, like, the old champion thing. Like, even this thing kind of is reminiscent of the old champion sweatshirts. You know what I mean? So this is kind of like their take on it, and I like it a lot. No pull string for the, for the hood, if you notice. I mean, when does the last – ask yourself this. When's the last time you actually put a hood up and then pulled the strings to tighten it up? I could think of doing that a couple of times. That's it. And probably mostly as a kid to be like, Haha, look, you can only see me like through my, you know, my little opening here. And, uh, and that was it. So actually, I think that's a good thing to get rid of those. I did notice the neck is a little tight. I have a pretty thick neck though. So I don't know, but I like them. They're comfortable. They are, uh, I've been rocking them quite a bit lately. So that's what this is. But I wanted to tell you that I've actually turned this into a newsletter as well. And if you're already signed up for my email list, you may have gotten the first one. Because again, if you don't want to watch this uh, and listen to me go on and on about God knows what, then you can get it distilled down into an, an email, right? And so literally all I have in there is at the top, there's a link to this video, the newest video, whatever. And then beneath that is the products that I talked about. And then I think I might give you like, you know, if I'm talking about like what I'm listening to or what I'm watching that week or whatever is kind of start a discussion, then I'll put that at the bottom. It's more or less the Coffee with Carl thing distilled down. And so I think this could be useful in a couple of ways. Number one, if you don't have the time to watch the video or whatever, and maybe you don't want to miss like a drop or whatever, uh, this is a good way to see it. The other thing is like if you wanted to listen through or I know a lot of people listen to this in the car or whatever, and then you want to go back and like check out that Ironheart shirt that they released or whatever in this newsletter it'll be right there so it's kind of a recap as well as to the stuff that we were talking about so 
um, there's a way to sign up. It's real easy. I think I left a link in the description or in the comments. I'll put it everywhere I possibly can so you can have the thing. Alternatively, you can go to my website, which is just carmorowski.com, and there's a thing there where you can sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to send it out once a week as long as I have the time and bandwidth to do it, and um, I think it'll be useful for, a lot of, useful for a lot of people. A lot of people have signed up already, so... Um, Anyway, I think it'll be good, and I promise that I'll never, like, spam you or waste your time or whatever. I mean, that's just not my style, so I think you know that already. But let's get into the new releases. All right, Filson. Filson has decided that it would be a good idea to come out with some shorts, which cost nearly $200. And I will, I'll say they look like cool shorts. They really do. Uh, but they're $185. This is called their Field Cargo Shorts. And I just, I don't know, man. I don't get it, right? Cotton Shorts. Uh, these do have some interesting things like features. Look at those front pockets, for example. I know they have a double seat, so that's cool, like a double layer butt, basically. Uh, and they are they're a like a, a a remake of some some U.S. Army troop 1941 shorts, which is really cool. Rugged reverse sateen, 100% cotton. Cool. I mean, it sounds great. But there's no way I'm paying $200 for shorts. I'm not doing it. That's, that's just crazy. If these were even pants, I'd say, ah, cool, but that's expensive, right? Shorts, I, I don't know. I, I mean, cut that number in half, maybe we can talk. Maybe, right? These are, 100, or these are $185, so if you cut that in half, let's say they were $90 even. No. I just still don't see a world that exists where I'm going to buy these. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'll, I'll go get some military surplus now, while we are on the topic of Filson, how about this 110th anniversary Mackinac Cruiser that they came out with? Now, it looks cool. I, I mean, I, I like it. The, you know, it's, it's basically, um, it's, it's a, okay. What Filson tends to do is they will reuse some of their old textile to make this limited edition stuff, right? They used, for the Chris Stapleton collection, they used some stuff that they had used in, in I think, the Packer coat previously. And then they reuse that for this. They call it dead stock or whatever. And I guess maybe technically it is. But I, I mean, this is like, I don't know. I mean, it's $200 more than the regular Mackinac Cruiser. And they just reuse some of their some of their their fabric from last year. You know what I mean? It's like, when I think of dead stock, I think of like some sort of really cool vintage wool that they found in the archive why, why would you have a wool archive anyway but you know they dug up somewhere or whatever not just we're reusing last year's stuff that we couldn't get rid of and that seems to be what they're doing and then charge you a premium for it now i mean it looks cool I, I i like the contrasting thread that they're using it looks interesting the snaps and the buttons are are silver rather than black but again we're talking seven hundred dollars it's just crazy. I don't know. I, this company, I have been saying I don't know too much because I simply don't. But this company has gone off the rails. And I I, I see them just careening towards, I, I'm not sure exactly what, but I think that these, these people over at Bedrock Manufacturing who got it from Brentwood Associates after the buyout, uh, private equity sometimes can mean the end of a great brand. Sometimes. Uh, you know, these, these companies will usually buy up a brand to make money. That's what they do, right? It's capitalism. But uh, I, I don't like what they've done to this brand. They've, they've really uh, clouded the water, and, and I don't know exactly what their aim is anymore. Who's wearing it? Is it, is it true workwear? Absolutely not. Is it meant for the Orvis crowd, uh, the people who want to kind of look like that, and that's totally fine. I'm not knocking it, right? Like you should be able to look like whatever you want and and enjoy whatever style you find necessary. Um, find necessary. I just don't know. I don't get it, and I don't like it, and I, I I find it harder and harder to defend Filson as a company, especially when they do stuff like this. Next up, Pure Blue Japan came out with their 16 and a half ounce slub denim. Uh, this is the Slim Straight. So this is the SLB005 that I'm looking at in particular right here. Now these are $230 expensive, no doubt about it. And I know I just bitched about $200 uh, shorts from Filson. These are also, you know, 100% cotton, long pants, and they're really, really expensive. But here's the difference, right? This material is is so unique and full of character. And I wanted to, I, I know you're probably saying, right, why would I talk about this pair of jeans, right? Blue jeans or blue jeans, 
and every company has them Ironheart, Samurai, Levi's, uh, Brave Star, Railcar, all these different companies have them. So, why would I pick out this particular one? Well, the reason is because it's starting to get a little warmer here. And I've started to wear some of my lighter jackets, right? And so if you saw my video where I whittled it down to five, I had a hard time getting rid of all of those jackets. So I have several of the ones that I'm like, they're still up for sale. But one of the ones that I like to wear is my Tanuki Redcast de uh, denim one, right? And this particular denim on these pair of PBJs reminds me a lot of that Tanuki jacket. That if you've never owned a... A, a pair of denim jeans or a jacket that is really, really unique and full of character, you owe it to yourself to do it because it's so much different than the flat, lifeless denim that we are used to, okay? Like right now, I'm wearing a pair of Origin Delta 68 jeans, right? And I like these because I could put them on and they feel like sweatpants. They stretch like crazy. They're really, really comfortable, um, but they don't have near the character that those do. And, and it's like, I, I just can't even tell you. It's really something special. And I think that if you're going to do that, if you're going to get into this like, you know, full of character kind of thing, these look like what you're going to want to do. Something that is like slubby and has some like hairs and like it's full of texture and maybe even some neps like nep and slub are different things. Um, maybe we can go into that at some point, but I just think that these look like they reminded me a lot of that Tanuki jacket and how much I really love it. It's the only denim jacket that I own and uh, it's, it's probably going to be the last one that I buy. I love it. And I think that these jeans are very similar to that. And I hope that you get the chance to experience something like this. Duluth Pack came out with their Outlander Pack. And immediately I want to just like walk off into the woods and get lost for like a month on the Appalachian Trail. Seriously, this thing reminds, I'll tell you what it reminds me of since you asked. Uh, it reminds me of my dad's backpack that he had. When we, we, we would go out, he was a big fisherman. And I don't mean to, to you know, sidetrack too much here, but I want to tell you why I picked this. And I've never spoken about Duluth Pack before, but I'm choosing to now because of this. So he had one. It was blue. This is green. Uh, but it was blue, and he would put his fishing stuff in there, and he would throw it on his shoulder, and almost every weekend we'd head off into the woods. And he would find these weird little spots, and, like, it wouldn't be a normal trailhead. He'd just find some place, and we, he had a Jeep um, chair. It was like, no, the Grand... Grand Cherokee? No, what the heck was it that they had before those? The Wagoneer, the Wagoneer, the old one. Wood paneling, the whole thing, right? They're like worth a lot now. Uh, and we, so he, we'd hop in that, we'd go off, and we would find like these little pools and stuff, right? And the whole deal was we would go out, he'd grab his backpack, his fishing rod, and we'd head into the woods. Now, I was into fishing. I mean, I was young, so I was like, all I really wanted to do was, like, walk around and, like, turn over rocks and, like, explore and stuff. And so his whole thing was he would smoke a pipe to keep away the mosquitoes, but he would smoke a pipe that that had very uh, – the, the aroma was very, very strong. So he would tell me, you can explore as long as you could smell my pipe. So don't go beyond that. And that was his way of being like, stay in this radius. I'm not going to watch you, but just use your nose. And looking back, I mean, he had a lot of trust in me. Now, luckily, I never got lost, so that was good. But, um, And every time without fail, you know, I'd say like, Dad, I'm hungry or whatever. I'd go back over, and he would pull out a Snickers bar from his uh, blue backpack. And it was like, that was our lunch, right? <laughs> like, I mean, if you think about it now, right? I think about it so fondly, but... Back in the day, he was just like, damn, I want to go fishing. Uh, all right, I got to bring my kid. He, just wander around and like, if you can smell my pipe, you're good. Oh, you're hungry? Don't worry. I got this thing. I got it at the gas station. You know what I mean? So um, for him, it was probably like the, the easiest lift. But those are um, those are memories that I certainly cherish. And I remember like it was yesterday. So this backpack reminds me a lot of that one. And I have no clue what his backpack was like. But this just looked like it. It reminded me of it in its layout. And uh, the only thing that's not coming with is a Snickers bar, but I think we could probably remedy that. In between the two main sections on the back, which are very deep, and I, I'm not sure that all of these have a specific use, but they look like you could easily fit a bladder, like a water bottle bladder in, in either one. And there are two dedicated water bottle uh, uh, compartments on the side and then a main flap opening. Um, and then the middle is an axe uh, or a hatchet sleeve. 
So I'm just like, this thing is fully featured. It's beautiful. It does come in several colors, looks like. So it looks like you can get it in green. You can get it in waxed olive drab. You can get it like a tan and you can get it in like a gray. And they, they all look dynamite. I think they look so freaking cool. And this is a company that I have really meant to check out. They just look great. I've heard great things about them. It's 565 bucks, but it ain't cheap because it ain't cheap. So I'll hopefully someday buy one of these and, and you know, maybe go on my own family adventure and tell you how it went. But it looks awesome. Now, I got to tell you, I don't, I don't think this is a new I don't think it's a new model at all, right? And, and when I was looking at the email that White sent out, I was trying to decipher whether this was a new model because I think I had remembered it before, but I'm not really up on all of the White's models. They have like 200 different ones. It's crazy. You ever go there and just like scroll through your boots? It, it can get overwhelming. But they actually, uh, these are on sale, which is why I thought they were really great. So this is a chore boot. Uh, it's on sale right now for $292. Originally $365. I believe this is part of the Goodyear Welted Whites, which is no problem at all. There's nothing to sneeze at because Goodyear welting is the, the standard for so many. And unless you really need that, that, that stitch down construction, which a lot of people don't like because it makes a thicker lip around the edge, this is going to be just fine. And if you're looking for a pair of boots under 300 bucks, I got to tell you, you know, if somebody said you want a pair of whites, you want a pair of red wings, I'd say, let me take a look at the whites because, you know, they have a long history, a uh, very cool company. So I don't think it's a new product, but it's on sale. Uh, and if it is a new product that I'm an idiot and I just didn't realize that, but either way, go and get yourself a discounted chore boot from whites. Viberg came out with a slipper. Wolverine came out. Now there's a name you don't hear me mention very often. Wolverine came out with the, the reforce boot. Uh, and now here's the thing. Okay. They're 150 bucks. They really are going after when you read the description and you look at they actually have a really cool looking animation on their their product page. When you go there, I'll try to include it here. They are really going after the idea that these are comfortable and lightweight and give you a lot of cushion. And I think that what they're doing is reacting to the brunt ads. Right. So brunt, uh, you'll never convince me that they are good products. I don't care who you are. A lot of people are saying like, no, I've had mine. They're good, you know? And I'm like, good for you. I'm glad. I'm happy that you were happy with your purchase. I will never own another Brunt product. They're, they're, to me, the deceptive marketing is enough to, to keep me away from them. But this isn't about Brunt. This is about Wolverine. I think that they're reacting to uh, what Brunt did with their Marin boot. And uh, I'm not saying that I really care for the way these things look at all. I don't like the way it's just like, a, a ton of pieces of leather all stitched together with like strange angles and stuff. And, but you know what, this is actually good. You're welted. So this is a resolable boot. So if you put these on and you realize like, Oh, actually these things are very comfortable. And then after a little while they start to compress and that like as foam tends to do and they become flat or whatever. And you want to, or you wear through them. Well, this one you can actually have rebuilt, which you can't do with the fake Goodyear welted uh, brunt. So I think that this is a, a better option. I wish this was around when I did that review because I would have gotten a pair of these and uh, possibly recommended them as a great alternative. This is, again, a, a brand that's been around for a long time. Uh, I would certainly trust more. And I think that if you're in the market for an inexpensive boot, these are 149 bucks, this could, this is, you could do much worse. Let me put it that way. Now, for my weird pick of the week, you could pay a ton of money to look homeless. Isn't that what we all want to do? This one is from, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this thing. Come on. This is the Fausto shirt in washed red. Uh, it's on uh, Vestas. Vestas? I don't know. I guess I'm pronouncing it right. Oh, by the way, thank you for clearing up the pronunci pronunciation of Dehen. I think it's Dehen. I can't remember. You told me what it is, and now I got to go back and look. But some people did give me some good sources as to how that brand is pronounced. And now I think, I think I got it. So I got I to gotta look it up and I'm going to write it and maybe I'll put it in like a little thing and frame it and put it on the wall right here so that we know what it is. But anyway, this is about the Fausto shirt. This thing looks crazy. I think that it's terry cloth, right? Is it? It's so it's 85% viscose, 9% polyamine, uh, 6% linen. So uh, it's um, made in Latvia from Italian fabric. This costs $415. But of course, the thing that you're going to notice is the fringe. The fringe. How long has it been since you've heard fringe on a jacket or a shirt or something like that, huh? Well, this has some fringe. Uh, it also kind of looks like somebody took your bath mat and made a shirt out of it. But uh, it reminds me of 
Every day I go to work in New Haven, Connecticut, and New Haven is an inner <laughs> New Haven is a city, and when you go through the inner city, you see a lot of homeless people. And uh, we're no different than any other state, and this looks like something that they would be wearing. And uh, so if you want to pay a ton of money to look like you don't have a ton of money, this is a good way to do it. Now, I'll tell you this much, though, all right? As much as I'm saying this thing's crazy, I'd never wear it, and I never would, it looks damn comfortable, so I guess if you're looking for something that's very, very unique for the summertime, you can get this. You can. No judgment. Now, I want to just kind of start this. This is a new little segment at the end here. Sometimes I'll talk about what I've been watching or listening to. This week hasn't really been anything different, so I didn't have anything to say. Uh, but I did get a great uh, a question. I think it was in Instagram. And so I like to just open it up here because sometimes somebody will ask a great question and then people in the comments will take it away and we can all learn a lot down there, right? There's a lot of really good people making comments and smart people. I mean, I, I always say my audience is the smartest in the... It, in, in YouTube. I mean, like, first of all, I have great people down there, people who are incredibly smart and have wonderful life experience. And on top of that, they're willing to share it. It doesn't get any better than that. So I, I, I would absolutely put my audience toe to toe with anybody's audience. And so when somebody asks me a question, I'll answer it in my way. But usually I'm looking at the comments to see what people down there who are smarter than I am are saying. So the question that somebody asked me on Instagram was, uh, I think they had made a recommendation that I make a, a video about like the best engineered uh, products or whatever. And they asked me what I thought the best engineered product of all time is like the product that's been kind of just like perfected. And I thought about it. And the first thing I was going to be was like, ah, maybe nine, maybe the portion on 11, right? That thing's just been like, like refined over and over and over again, but it's still not, I wouldn't say it's perfect and they keep changing it. And like, as technology gets better, it's going to get better. So what would be there? And I thought maybe the Swiss Army knife, but nah, I don't know. And then it came to me, and I think I remember seeing something about this before. So that's this is not an original idea. I think that I had seen it somewhere else. The aluminum can, right? I wish I had one here to show you because that would be way, way smarter on my part. But the aluminum can, think about how brilliant that thing is, right? It does so much. Not only does it hold your liquid, it also has its own opening uh, contraption on the top and for a long time they didn't right like the peel off lid tops right used to have, that's why they had can openers right like you could open a can that way and I don't know about you but like sometimes when we're doing home renovations or whatever we'll find the old cans where you used to like peel the top off and then discard that and now it's actually a part of the the can itself not only that but when you fold it back it'll also hold your straw <laughs> um, the cans can be stacked together very high as a matter of fact. So they're very, very uh, structurally sound, especially this direction, but they're also thin enough to be disposed of and crushed down and then recycled. Um, the, the bottom is concave again for that strength, but the sidewalls are thin enough that, like I mentioned, it can be crushed but not so thin to uh, you know collapse under your your strength when you're when you're drinking. Although sometimes you get those taller cans, sometimes you get a little dent in the top just from the weight of the liquid at the at the bottom. But I think that the aluminum can, the aluminum beverage can, I can't think of anything that has been more thoroughly engineered and perfected. And in my time, I have actually seen a change. Right, so I'm 42, and when I was a kid, the mouth opening right was a lot smaller. And then I remember seeing, I think it was Budweiser came out with like the wide mouth can where the opening was a little bit wider. And that was more or less to allow air to go in through the sides and the liquid would come out the middle. And so you were able to drink and now they're all some variation of wide mouth. But it's funny because if I find a can from back in the eighties, you can tell because it has a slightly narrower uh, opening there. But I think that when it comes to perfectly engineered products nothing does it better than the aluminum can and i think that i had seen like a documentary or something about all of these things i had just mentioned and many more um so i'm going to try to find that and if i do i'll link it below because i remember being blown away when i saw that whenever it was several years ago and i'm still impressed today so the aluminum can i wish it was sexier i wish it was some kind of cool knife like the bowie knife or something but nah nah the aluminum can <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So if you have any other cool questions that, you know, you want to pose to me and also, you know, answer or, or, you know, put out to the audience here, let me know in the comment section below. 
But you guys, really, thank you so much, especially this week. I'm feeling a lot better than I did last week, and it's in no small part because of you guys and your support and your your encouraging comments and stuff like that. I feel uh, uh, much better. And it's nice to know that, you know, man, when we're feeling down, there's somebody else to pick you back up. And I have that benefit. And I worry that maybe some of you who are watching don't have that. And I hope that if that's the case, that you find somebody or know somebody who you can reach out to and just check in on. You know what I mean? If we can do one thing like that, you know, just just check in on a friend of yours. Be like, hey, man, just want to see how you're doing. You know what I mean? And, like, let them talk. And, um, you know, that can go a long way. Sometimes somebody just needs the door opened so that they can they can walk through it. So, you know, check in on your buddies. Check in on your friends. Especially men have a hard time you know, with this kind of thing, which is why this, like this mental health thing and feeling of loneliness and all that stuff that so many men suffer with, uh, really hits home. So let's all just try to do our part whenever we can to just check in on our buddies. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, that's it for this week's coffee with Carl. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are amazing. Uh, I appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.